Assessment Task 2A, Assessment Framework Presentation for the Unit EDAR 606 Art Education 2, Understanding and Assessing Student Learning, completed by student S00060887. The assessment framework that you can see on the screen in front of you has been inspired by the literature with a particular focus on applying understandings of art learning. The framework links explicitly to current art curriculum, namely the New South Wales Visual Arts 7 to 10 and Stage 6 syllabus. Ideas for the key components of this framework have also been influenced by personal beliefs and practices that have been experienced in the secondary visual arts classroom. Each of the key components of this framework will be discussed individually in relation to the literature that inspired them, but also in relation to a sample strategy for assessing student learning. The core components of the framework will be discussed. However, I feel it is important to first summarise a sample assessment strategy as a means to introduce you to some of the key ideas that will be explored more explicitly in relation to the core components. This assessment strategy has been formulated by ideas for art teaching and learning as presented in the various literature. The strategy complies with the New South Wales curriculum documents and in doing so achieves outcomes related to the core content of practice, conceptual framework and the frames. The assessment, inspired heavily by the Assessment for Learning model in Timpley 2009, aims to align itself with the learning mantra currently used within my workplace. Everything counts, challenge yourself, resilience. According to Matheson Mitchell in referencing Bordeaux, teaching and learning is explicitly linked. Therefore, with this in mind, the activities have been formulated with the purpose of achieving assessment goals. The assessment strategies and learning activities will run simultaneously over a one-year period. For this reason, it is designed for the elective visual arts program offered in stages 5 and 6. However, it could be modified for application within the mandatory stage 4 course. At the heart of this assessment strategy is feedback, an idea presented by Brown, 2004-2005. The activities aim to draw out authentic learning opportunities, that is, lived experiences, inspired by processes evident in the art world, as discussed by Sloan and Nathan, 2005, and to provide multiple opportunities for varied modes of formative and summative feedback, the methods of which are generated by the students. The assessment strategies are divided into four components. The first one is students work collaboratively to organise an exhibition. Formative feedback of the process is conducted through informal discussions, self and peer feedback, external expert judgement and teacher judgement. As far as summative assessment, judges and external experts provide feedback. Community feedback forms will be utilised student questionnaires and discussions, as well as teacher judgment. Task B requires students to create a body of work to submit to the exhibition panel. Formative feedback is offered by the teachers, by external experts, by their peers, as well as self-reflection. Reference will be made to the Bostez body of work marking matrix from the HSC course and the rules and regulations stipulated in the artwork submission requirements that the students created as a component of task A. Summative feedback will be offered in terms of their work will be judged by a panel in accordance with both the rules and regulations of the exhibition as well as the Bostez marking matrix. Students task C is submitted with their body of work and students organise the submission process in order to determine the way feedback is provided. Task C, students submit a proposal to the exhibition committee and they can use a medium of choice. Formative feedback is provided via peer assessment, for example, two stars and a wish, and self-coding sheets. Summative feedback is along the same lines as task B. Task D, require students to complete a critical review of, the, of their body of work and exhibition. If their body of work is not in the exhibition, then they conduct a critical review of somebody else's. Formative feedback is along the same lines as task C. 
but summative feedback is based on peer-reviewed, again, student-constructed frameworks. And the best critical reviewed can be submitted to the school letter um, or perhaps submitted to an online art review blog. Special attention within each of these activities is given to the challenging of the traditional role of the teacher. Instead, the teacher becomes a meddler in the middle, as discussed by McWilliam 2008, promoting practical knowledge, as explored by Sternberg and Caruso in 1985. While students will play a pivotal role in generating assessment guidelines, they'll be encouraged to move away from the more traditional forms of written or timed exams modes of assessment, as suggested by Brown, 2004-2005. By incorporating greater opportunities for choice, it attempts to promote intrinsic motivation, an idea explored by Pink, and student ownership of their learning, Sloan and Nathan, 2005. It may also prove beneficial to highlight that this strategy could also be used as a source of qualitative research. Within the assessment strategy, multiple opportunities to collect qualitative data on student learning are made available. Some examples include, but are not limited to, student portfolios or art diaries, which includes idea development, experimentation, artist studies, for example, formal and informal interviews, audio-visual documentation, and student work samples, such as artworks and exhibition. This is an attempt to fill a gap in the research which has been identified by Eisner, Corcoran and Sim and Wolf. In addition, it is attempting to avoid a reductionist approach to assessment and to allow educators to feel more confident in making a judgment about what their students understand as well as their ability to apply this understanding in a, in a variety of contexts. Sir Hubert Reed states, the aim of education ought to be conceived of as the preparation of artists. This idea is, is evident in the sample assessment strategy, as a variety of tasks allow students the opportunity firstly to engage in student choice, allowing them to take control of their own learning and thus provide opportunities for them to showcase their abilities. For example, the organisation of an exhibition is made up of a variety of areas of responsibility. Students are offered their opportunity to select a given role. This may then draw on a different skill set that transcends a focus on fine arts. Approaches to learning in this assessment should be learner-centred. In the sample provided, students play a pivotal role in controlling the direction of their learning. Student choice is promoted at every opportunity. The implementation of activities relevant to processes that occur in the art world contribute to the development of practical knowledge, that is, knowledge that is applicable to the real world context, but also tacit knowledge, which is achieved through a process of osmosis. And this is supported by the inquiry-based model being employed in the sample strategy. Fit for purpose assessment, which is discussed by Brown, looks to understand what is being assessed. So, for example, their ability to organise events, to work collaboratively as well as independently within allocated timeframes, to engage in art making, the mastery of technical and conceptual elements in relation to um, identified guidelines, to articulate their practice in a persuasive manner and to critically review their work. Um, as well as to construct marking guidelines and strategies on how to assess their work. It also explores how it is to be assessed, which is through methods of both formative and summative assessment strategies, which are constructed by the students. Thus, that is also something that is being assessed. But also, and almost more importantly, why it's being assessed. So looking to the idea that it provides opportunities for student self-reflection um, and to build upon their learning, which is a feature um, heavily identifiable with informative feedback, which is a strong focus of the sample strategy provided. The development of disposition presents a focus on learning capacity and promotes the idea that each student should be challenged to expand their learning capacity. Claxon in 2010 identified traits of successful learners and epistemic culture which have been considered in the formulation of the assessment strategy example. In terms of effective learners he looks to those who are curious, adventurous and questioning, resilient, determined and focused open-minded, flexible, imaginative and creative, critical, sceptical and analytical, both methodical, methodical 
and opportunistic, reflective, thoughtful and self-evaluative, keen to build on their products and their performances, collaborative but also independent. In terms of an epistemic culture, it looks to a change of language towards the process of learning and not just the final product. Activities that stretch the learning capacity. Split screen thinking, which allows a dual focus on content as well as learning dispossessions that um, the learners are AB attempting to expand. The inclusion of wild topics, which aim to genuinely engage and challenge students. Transparency, clearly identifying the aim of the learning, that students are actively involved. They attempt to transfer their thinking and consider how it can be applied in out-of-school um, situations and that their learning is a progress that will continue to grow and get stronger. In order to commit to and advocate for the value of visual arts to student learning, it's really important to account for the context in which visual arts education currently sits. So we are currently within a culture that is heavily focused on globalisation and neoliberal agenda. However, creativity as a discourse has been directly connected to the arts and it has become increasingly significant to policy makers. Uh, the reason to summarise is they view it as being capable, capable of contributing to the knowledge base economy, aka the economic agenda. This said, the visual arts need to take advantage of this opportunity and use it as a means to develop quality learning programs and assessment strategies that aim to navigate these conflicting discourses. While it's difficult, it is possible to cater to the performance of zest, culture and incentives while engaging in rich and deep learning activities, which is attempted to be promoted within the example assessment strategy discussed uh, previously. Um, in order to do this, I look to the work of Eisner, uh, who argues that other visions of education are possible, one where the arts are seen as significant and the learning that takes place within the visual arts classroom can be used as a guide or integrated into uh, other areas of curriculum. He argues that the strength of the arts, and namely visual arts, is that it encourages students to make judgments in the absence of a rule, and this is the idea of the rightness of fit. In doing so, they consider the various features that appear within a field of relationships. It embraces multiple perspectives and solutions that can be discovered through problem solving. Each of these um, are evident in the sample assessment strategy that has been developed. In addition to this, however, it, um, Eisner goes on to explore the fact that form and content are mostly inextricable. Inextric and the quote we know more than we can tell becomes extremely important in terms of assessment because it highlights the significance of observation as an assessment strategy. The idea of working within a particular medium can be applied both within the fine arts and art making but also um, within any general field and that is explored within the example assessment strategy in the variety of activities that the students are, re are required to participate in and that each of those activities has its own um, affordances and constraints that they need to be aware of. Suppose one of the most important points that is brought up by Eisner is the fact that education at its best is when students learn to design it themselves. When they become the architect of their own education. And that particular quote is really significant to the example assessment strategy that has been developed um, in the sense that it focus, focuses on student-centred learning activities where they control the direction of their learning. 
Core to the sample assessment strategy is the idea of collaboration between student and teacher, with experts in the field and among teachers. Popovich notes that authentic assessment involves these various relationships at play because it is reflective of lived experiences. In the postmodern context in which we work, there, there is no one right way. Um, technology advancements have opened up multiple opportunities and with it a representational theory. As discussed by Osberg and Biesta, cited in green, where it's promoted that um, educators should understand knowledge, model and theories as tools that can be used in engaging with the real world. Hence, the implementation of learning activities and assessment strategies that aim to mimic the real world scenarios and processes become extremely important. The building of arts education partnerships is fundamental to assessment uh, to authentic assessment within the visual arts. And this has started to be explored through the use of artists in resident programs or workshops, learning communities such as 100 Mile Art within the Parramatta Diocese. Um, and this particular community encourages networking and it's proved beneficial not only in the sharing of resources but also in the organisation of pilot marking. Such programs promote community links and this goes on to assist students to recognise their place within the arts landscape. As Thomas writes, social tact, group solidarity, trusting relations and dialectic collaborations become hallmarks of creative transactions. Hence, if we want to challenge our students' learning capacity, then we must give them the opportunity to do so. The promotion of innovation, creative problem solving and risk taking is essential to the, cha to the challenging and expanding of students' learning capacity. As the syllabus states, visual arts places great value on the development of students' intellectual and practical autonomy, reflective action, critical judgment and understanding of art in art making and in critical and historical studies of art. As a result, it is reviewed, reviewed as a generous system to cultivate a diversity of achievement it involves collaboration and invention. The Melbourne Declaration of Educational Goals for Young Australian writes that successful learners are active, independent, can collaborate and communicate. They are creative, innovative and resourceful and they are able to solve problems in the ways that draw upon a range of learning areas and disciplines. Thus, the the previous explored assessment strategy aims to align itself with the goals articulated in the Melbourne Declaration and in doing so encourages students to engage in the behaviours identified. Notably, the promotion of student choice within each component of the sample assessment strategy aims to promote intrinsic motivation, idea discussed previously. And as Priestland at L writes... Artists like to make problems and see if they can solve them. So why aren't we allowing students the opportunity to do this? Assessment strategies need to focus on allowing students the opportunity to make problems and to solve them through inquiry, experimentation, exploration, through making mistakes, risk-taking. This is further supported by the fact that public exhibitions or, or authentic assessment lends itself to increased passion and level of ownership, again drawing on the fact that students can identify themselves as artists or at least emerging artists within the community and then pl therefore places themselves on within the arts landscape. The sample assessment strategy presented, whilst guided by ideas of pedagogy presented in the literature, aligns itself with the outcomes of the visual arts curriculum document. Within this document, core areas of content are identified. These include practice, art making, art criticism and art history, the conceptual framework concerned with the agencies of artist, artwork, world and audience, and the frames, subjective, structural, cultural and postmodern. Are presented. Each of these areas of content are evident within the sample assessment strategy. For example, students engage in art making and investigate art history practice to create a body of work. They engage in art criticism when constructing a critical review. 
They explore the relationships of the conceptual framework when organising and attending the exhibition. They have the ability to apply one or more frames when creating an artwork or write or constructing their proposal. The broad nature of the outcomes of the syllabus dot points allows teachers and students alike to be creative with the learning activities and assessment strategies they employ. Therefore, multiple connections between these content areas can be made to the sample assessment strategy presented. Assessment practices are developmental and feedback should be at the heart of the process, according to Brown. As discussed earlier, the, the sample assessment strategy was explored with a focus on formative and summative feedback. Within the sample strategy, aside from the use of the Bostez marking matrix, students are, in, were in, are encouraged to construct their own assessment guidelines. This encourages them to consider what, how and why of assessment. In working collaboratively to construct assessment guidelines, the requirements and reasoning behind tasks becomes more transparent and students are more likely to expand their learning capacity. Involving students in the process promotes collaboration and the students feel not only aware of the expectations but they have a voice and therefore they feel more confident in taking control of their own learning. The methods of assessment used within the sample strategy will be heavily dependent on student choice. Um, thus, the modes of receiving feedback will also be guided by students' understanding of how they learn best. This may draw on ideas by Brown, where it's suggested that only a mark is given, or alternatively, they may receive feedback without a mark. And this could be um, in the way of verbally, either through formal or informal discussions, or maybe even an audio file, um, or potentially in written form. They may even explore the idea of exit slips or Google Docs or um, use of questionnaires. What is important, however, is for students to recognise that feedback should be constant and ongoing, uh, perhaps um, drawing attention to the fact that each lesson they should be engaging in some form of feedback. That's both giving and receiving. The Boston Art Academy, in their promotion of authentic assessment, asked students to continually present their work in progress to peers, teachers and community members. They include outsiders or a committee to judge the body of work at their end of year exhibition or end of semester exhibition, I should say, thus drawing focus to the importance of the student work. It's going beyond the classroom so that the community see it. This is a procedure that's not uncommon in the New South Wales HSC marking. But it could be argued that this needs to be happening earlier on in their schooling and more consistency, consistently. Thus, the sample assessment strategy that I have formulated. In the formulation of a visual arts assessment framework, attention has been given to ideas regarding arts learning as presented in the literature. The key ideas draw, drawn on highlight the importance of student choice. Therefore, the sample strategy dictates particular tasks, yet how students choose to explore and complete these tasks and how they are assessed is governed by the students themselves. This aims to move away from the more traditional role of the teacher, as recommended by the literature, towards student-centred activities where they are required to take a more active role in their learning. It is argued within the literature that flexibility of instruction and student choice can lead to intrinsic motivation, thus opportunities to expand one's learning capacity becomes available. Curriculum documents, namely the visual arts syllabus for years 7 to 10 and stage 6, as well as the Melbourne Declaration of Educational Goals for Young Australians have guided the sample strategy to ensure that required outcomes are met. The assessment sample strategy shows progression towards postmodern views of education. It is innovative in its recognition of form and content being linked, thus the means influences the ends. And this is written and this is within the student's control, a contrast to commonly employed pedagogy. With its focus on creating lived experiences, it promotes artistry in various disciplines guided by real world experience, therefore becoming an engaging method of assessment. Task 2A, Assessment Framework Presentation for Unit EDAR 606. Arts Education 2, Understanding and Assessing Student Learning, completed by student S0006088
Thank you.